Hey, what's up guys? It's Caleb with App Design Tips, and today I want to talk to you about the new Sketch Update 5.2. Now on this update, there's object and text style overrides in symbols. And what that means is we no longer have to create color symbols for every single color or state symbols for every single state. And this reduces the amount of symbols that we're going to use, and we can override these styles at any time. So I want to show you what that looks like in Sketch here. Now we're going to be using a file from Pablo Stanley's Sketch Together tutorial. This tutorial shows you how to create button styles and color styles. In the previous version of Sketch, to get all of these varied buttons, we have to go into Symbols, and we have to have a symbol for every single color, for every single state, and also for these icons here. So if we want to reduce the amount of symbols that we use, we can simply click on this rectangle here, and we can apply a layer style. So we're going to click Create New Layer Style and that's going to name it the same thing as the shape here, palette, primary style. I'm going to just continue along here, creating a new style for each one of these colors. And now when I do that, I can delete these symbols. But watch what happens when I delete this. It tells me that this is no longer going to be a symbol and it's going to create groups instead. So when I hit delete, I go back into the example and now all of these are blue because it deleted that symbol. But that's okay because we're going to use style overrides now. Now the same thing for these hover buttons. Um, I'm going to just rename the shape the same thing as the artboard here. So let's do state pressed. This object is going to be called state pressed. And then this one here is state disabled. So let's copy this name and name this state disabled. Now we can do the same thing for these states. Create a new layer style. Create a new layer style create a new layer style. And now we can delete these as well. Now what happens is these buttons were using nested symbols for those colors and those states. So if we scroll down here, we can see there's a folder called state and I'm going to ungroup this because I just want the rectangle. And there's also one called color and I can actually delete this because we're going to apply the object style directly on mask. So I'm going to delete this on all three of these buttons. And then I'm going to ungroup these state folders so that we can just have this called state. Okay, we have this all cleaned up now, and now we just have to apply these object styles. So we can go here and go to our mask. I'm actually going to call this color, and I'm going to add an emoticon here. So I'll add this little paint palette here and call this color. I like emoticons because it makes it easier to find in the properties panel. So let's add these here. And now I can select all three of these colors for all three of these buttons. And I can go into appearance and just make this primary for now. And same thing with state. I can click on these states now. And I'm going to make this state. Let's make it uh, hover styled. And I actually want to create a new state here. So I'm going to just create a rectangle and I'm going to give this rectangle a 0% opacity and we can do something like this. And now when I click on this, I can create a new layer style. I'm actually going to call this state none. And what that will do is I'll have disabled hover none and pressed here. So now I can click on each one of these state objects here, state, state, state. Go over here to hover style. I'm going to create a none state. So there we go. We've got our buttons figured out and we just eliminated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven extra symbols here. So now we can create a new page and we'll just call this buttons. And we can go into our symbol and add a button here. I'm going to add a large one. And we can add this button in here. We can remove the glyph. And let's say we want a warning pressed state. So we can go over here into color. We can name this secondary style. And actually, instead of this saying secondary style, it needs to be named warning. So I'm going to create a rectangle here. I'm going to add the secondary style right here. And I can go into organize layer styles. And I'm just going to call this warning. I don't know why I didn't catch that before. And then secondary. And then this could be called success. So you can rename the styles that way. And now when I click on here, it's going to be palette warning. And I want the state now to be pressed. 
So that's a press state. Or I can go in here and make this none. And if I copy this button now, I can replace this with a small button. And I'm going to set the original size. So now we have the small button here. And I want this to be a success button. So I can go over here into my colors, go into primary style, or sorry, success. And then I can click on this icon. Let's do a check mark. And then instead of this saying button, I'm just going to hit the space bar once and hit return. And now we have a success button. So we have all of those overrides within the symbols. It's the same symbol. And let's say that we create a few other ones. I'm going to create a primary button, a primary, and then without a icon. And then we'll just name this testing. And now anytime we want to change these colors, for example, this warning color is a little bit faded and muted. So I can go into the fill. I can change this to be a little bit more vibrant, something like that. And then all I have to do is go into my appearance and click update style. And you'll notice here that's updated as well. Same thing if I change this now to the primary. And now I want the primary to be purple. I do something like that. And then I go here and update the style. And now this is going to be updated as well. And if we go into our previous examples, because all of these are set to primary now, they're all purple. So that's just a brief overview of how object styles works. Now this works the same with text styles. And for example, if we go into our symbols, back into our symbols, we have three different button sizes. And that's because this text here is 18 point, 16 point, and 14 point. But if we wanted, we could create a new style and we can create a new text style here, create a new text style, and we'll just do CTA uh, large. We'll also do one CTA medium, and CTA small. Okay, so we have those all set up now, and so we can just jump right back into our button here. We have this testing one. And we have the CTA here that says testing, and we also see that it says CTA small. So if I want to make that text large, I can make that larger just like that. And then now I can make the text height 40 pixels. And so you really could use one button instead of these three and just change the state to large, medium, or small, whatever you want to do here. Now that's just a brief overview of how you can use object styles and text styles in your project. And this will really reduce the amount of symbols that you're going to create and nested symbols to just change colors and text sizes and things like that. I hope you enjoyed this tip. And if you did, please subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of future videos.